This is the pump from my IPA filtration system, and it's given up the ghost, and I'm going to replace it with a more chemical resistant pump. But ultimately, it begs the question, is filtration the best way for me to keep my IPA clean for cleaning my resin prints? My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and Do you making. ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So they all just end up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Just get an Alfred backpack hanger. It's reliable, versatile, sturdy, and it holds your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today. This video's sponsor is Jigga. It's one of my new manufacturing partners. I create the CAD, I upload it, I specify the material that I want, I pick the vetted supplier that I like, kick off the project and pay, communicate with them if they have any questions, wait for the part to show up, and boom, you get something like this. Check them out for your next project, Jigga. I, -O. Oh, I love saying Jigga. Let's remove the old pump from the side of my cart. This is where the 3D printer lives. And we'll take things apart, we'll see if we can investigate and figure out what's going on with this pump. Ultimately, we can't really determine that. So we're going to scrap it, get a different pump. I got this pump on eBay. It's a magnetic driven pump. So it's a little more chemically resistant uh, than the previous pump. So I'll wire it up. I've got to put a plug on the end of the cord and we'll remount it back here. It needs to be lower than things so that the IPA can flow into it. And I use some of the old, well, all the old fittings really, and basically hook it up back to the system with the UV light. And then this is the output that goes to that coiled UV system. This pump requires it to be primed. So I have a squeeze bottle here with some IPA in here. And then on the inlet, I fill that with IPA to sort of fill the whole system. We can turn it on. And this, this pump is like super quiet, actually. It works pretty good. Stucks the stuff in. It takes a little bit of rigging. And I get it to go to flow through everything and get it, get it functioning. So it's, it's running. But, you know, all of this is, is, again, more work that I want to do. I don't want to deal with all this stuff. I just want to resin print my stuff, clean my stuff, and go on to the next project. So, And I turn the, the wash tank on here to agitate it to try to get the uh, contaminants to flow through the whole system and get my IPA as you know clean as I possibly can. But now, th this is sort of the, the issue. Um, and to try to get even more contaminants out of here, I'm using a flocculant, and this is causes the resin particles to clump together. And it works good. You know, I get this yellow goop stuff here, and it all sort of comes together and ultimately clogs up in the filters and gets kind of everywhere. Um, and it gets out of the IPA, gets stuck in the basket. Again, more work than I really want to do or need to do uh, to mess with this. And so it's really starting to set in. This is the IPA. At some point, I can't get it any cleaner than this. And it's slimy and it's slippery and I got plenty of it. And I, I, what am I going to do with this stuff? I can't use it anymore to wash the resin prints. So the hard truths of this filtration system are starting to set in. It has its limitations. Does it work? Yes. But ultimately, you got to swap the IPA out. So I'm on YouTube and I watched this video from Ember Prototypes, Phil. He's got 
one of these Uniram solvent recycling machines. And I'm like, dang, what is that? So I watched the video. I even reached out to Phil, super nice guy. I'll link to his video below. And he was really the inspiration for this. I found this on Marketplace for a grand in Buffalo. Had to drive there from Detroit. Uh, knew these are 45, 5,500 bucks made by Uniram Corporation out of Canada. This one's seen better days and it's a little bit older unit, but works great. And I can recycle my solvent and get clean solvent out of the dirty stuff. So I'll take you on a little tour of how this works. Let's take the old dirty solvent out of the wash tank here from the Form 1. Uh, I think this is the Form 1 wash station. And we'll take this out into the garage because I'm not doing this in the, in the shop. It's a little too toxic. So this is done outside and look at that. You can see all the sludge that's built up in the bottom of the tank here. It's pretty nasty. That's even a part that just fell in there that somehow flipped out of the basket from being agitated. So that's some of the sludge that's in the bottom there. That's got to get cleaned out. And look, here's a nice little yellow nodule of uh, congealed resin from the flocculent stuck stuck down there in the bottom so you put a plastic liner in there and you close the lid and you close the top and you set the temperature and there's three there's three temperatures i set it to the lowest one i hit start and the machine runs it takes about four or five hours and look at that nice clean ipa coming out of the solvent recycler. I have it going into a one gallon jug here just so you can kind of see that it is nice and clean, but normally we'll fill that tank up. Uh, it's a five gallon tank and I've got a five gallon uh, metal uh, closed lid uh, bucket in the bottom and we fill that up and we recycle five gallons at a time. And then the, you were left with the sludge basically <clears throat> which is the resin, the res residual resin in this bag. And that's, that's what's left of everything. And you can dispose of that in the trash and you get nice, clean, crystal clear IPA. Yeah. The stuff in my, the bottom of the tank was a little bit um, dirty already, but the stuff coming out of this is crystal clear. It's my understanding that the IPA that comes out of here is in the 92 to 95 sort of percent range. I've always used 99% uh, IPA, but through the distillation process that gets lowered a little bit. I'm not entirely sure if you're using the 70% I isopropyl, if you can increase the percentage or how that works. I'm, I'm unclear on that. Maybe somebody can leave a comment about that, but I'm basically getting perfectly crystal clear IPA to run in my wash tanks. And I'm very pleased with that. The solvent recycler is a game changer for me. It allows me to have clean IPA anytime I need to have it in both of my wash tanks. I don't have to prime the pump, change the filters, or manage any maintenance on that machine like I do on the filtration system. So win-win for me. I'm gonna start a recycling program where you can drop off your dirty IPA to be cleaned and recycled. This will benefit everybody in the community. If you have dirty IPA, you can at least drop it off and it can get cleaned and recycled, keeping it out of groundwater or contaminating the environment, making things better for everybody on the planet. Once I build up a stockpile of IPA, I'll offer some sort of an exchange system. You'll bring me a certain amount of contaminated, dirty IPA, and I'll exchange that with you for some sort of a clean amount of recycled, distilled IPA from the machine here, uh, allowing you to have clean IPA at a much cheaper, more reasonable cost than buying the stuff new.
it's a win-win for everybody. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. There's a brand new Bots and Design website with a store that has the backpack hangers, the lure lock squeeze bottles, and a ton of different basic model making supplies that you can use in your projects. Check it out in the link in the description below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.